This is the Moog Workshop created for Moogfest 2014. And this is the Game Boy Advance released in North America on June 11th, 2001. Hey, it just turned 19 years old yesterday. Happy birthday, Game Boy. Besides the age group gap, what is the difference between these two devices? How are they similar? Both the Workstat and the Game Boy Advance have the capability to generate square waves, which look like this and sound like this. Pretty similar, huh? Yes, the Moog may not have a CPU and it may be all analog, but the logic that the Game Boy Advance and the Moog use to generate square waves is pretty similar. You can go ahead and take a look at both of the chips, both the programmable sound generator inside the Game Boy Advance and the oscillator chip inside the Moog Workstat. I've linked some documents below to help you learn more about these. Now, I don't know about you, but I think music would get kind of boring if there was just one square wave we use all the time. And that's why we have tools available to us both on the Game Boy and Workstat, such as Pulse with Modulation. This allows us to create many different versions of square waves, each having a unique timbre. The length of each square wave is known as its duty cycle. The longer it's on, the higher the percentage of the duty cycle. Here's how the Game Boy Advance and the Moog are different. See, if we look inside the Moog, we can see it has potentiometers, which allow us to fluently adjust the duty cycle, the pulse width modulation. But the Game Boy, on the other hand, if we go to the system directories, go to the tonk, lib, and go to memdef.h, we can see that the programmable sound chip only has four duty cycle settings. And yes, that's not much, but in its day and age, it managed to work. Composers made it work, so if they made it work, we can make it work. And it kind of brings back the feeling of nostalgia. So all we have to do to change this square wave cycle is go ahead, open up the sound example that we compiled in the previous tutorials in this series. Make sure to check those out. You can check the last one up out up there if you missed it. But anyway, now that we should know how to compile that, we can just go ahead and change this variable right here to the duty cycle we want. And once we change that, we can just compile it like we've been doing. And voila, we have different duty cycles. So here's what they sound like compared to the Moog, and here's what the Game Boy sounds like. I've set the Moog so it's, it's compared to the, the Game Boy settings. It's pretty much the same duty cycle. I just roughly tuned the knob, but you get the point. Let's see how they sound. All right, this is 12.5, so you can see the knob right there. Pretty similar. All right, this is 25. Knob's a little bit more turned to the left. This is 50%. You can see it's slightly turned to the left. That is 50% though. And you can tell by the sound. Sounds pretty much the same. And finally, 75%, you can see, yeah, it's about three quarters. We learned that the Moog Workstat is a lot different because it's mostly analog and doesn't use a CPU. However, the Workstat and the Game Boy surprisingly are very similar, even with their age gaps. This just shows that even in the earlier technology, we see some of these methods such as pulse width modulation being used and lots of other different methods we'll get to in this series. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something. If you did, make sure to leave a like and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.